Voyager 2 will pass within 4.3 light years of Sirius the dog star in approximately 196,000 years. Adam, I'm having lunch. Speaking. Oh, I'm sorry, see, the Star Tracker system is No. Lunch time is for God talk. A woman moved into 3A. All right. No, that's lunch talk. From Fox Searchlight Pictures. Beth Buckwell. Adam. Comes a story about two strangers. Can you see the sky from the third floor? Yes, I would if the windows weren't covered in soot. One a little stranger than the other. <laughs> Adam? Yeah, it's like a, you know, I feel like a big risk doing this because it's his first film. How far in the script were y'all reading when you're like, I gotta do this, this is great? Uh, I wouldn't say for me there was um, one moment in the first reading that I felt that it was more growing interest and the moment in the script that, that I that, that kind of really struck home was about a third of the way in when when Adam says that he has Asperger's syndrome. Not because I thought, oh wow, fantastic, that's exciting, there's really something to get into there, but because I thought that it was a very it was a smart way to structure a script that that information hadn't been handed over for the first third of the movie, mm -hmm. that, that therefore, you know, you would be asked to, to be introduced to this character just as, as a person without a label. And that, that gave me real interest in, in the writing and the person who, made, who was going to make it. And then I met Max, and I would say it was in talking to him that, that it, it, um, I began to realize that he could back up what he'd written. How much um, did you guys know about Asperger's Syndrome like, prior to shooting? Did you know a little bit? or? Yeah. <laughs> no, for me, I, I knew nothing. I was. Yeah. What about you? I have a family friend who has Asperger's, so I knew. Um, I did know a bit about it. Yeah, he was. A, he's a teenage kid. Um, you know, obviously he's from out of, you know, um, in his thirties. But um, so a little bit. But I didn't go too overboard with my reading and research just because Beth doesn't know that much. So yeah. I just keep that. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, in the film, like you, you, you have to do a lot of like emotionless and you know very emotional what kind of research did you do to get to prepare for this role um plenty because I, I had to understand um, as best I could the nature of the condition as a whole and then begin to be specific about it so that I could consider who Adam was as a, as a human being um, so that those you know th those those Kind of either big bursts of emotion that he has, or the moments when he's much harder to read, uh, were coming from a place of understanding in my part. So I wasn't, I, I didn't want to just be playing Adam as a, you know, f as as he would be perceived. I mean, um, it, you know, it's, it's easy just not to look at somebody and be distant or, or, or whatever. But I needed to have some appreciation of what was actually going on behind that. Um, and that's that's the that's the point of the film, in fact, is yeah, to absolutely. slowly unpeel that and unravel it. So I had to, I had to work all of that out. Did you meet with anybody that had mm -hmm. uh, Asperger's? Yeah, yeah. Um, eventually, not immediately, because obviously there was a, quite a lot I wanted to figure out before I could sit down with them and you, you know, um, kind of ask them the favor of sharing and opening up and sharing their lives with me. Well, I needed to do that bit. The, the, um, the, 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 I, would, I wouldn't have felt right turning up without having done a lot of work before that. Yeah. But yeah, certainly. certainly, certainly. In the film, you're like a huge like science buff. Yeah. Um, how hard was that to like memorize the terminology and you know like the telescopes and, um, and all of that? There were bits and pieces that were that was all pretty tough. I mean, the stuff about the space um, when I show uh, Rose uh, the um, I can't remember this word. When I, you know, he makes this little planetarium in, in his own, yeah. in his own apartment because she's expressed and passing interest in it, and he, he gets so excited, so he builds this incredible kind of light show, um, and and then and and then almost blows it by just opening up this massive spiel about space, which which slightly overwhelms her. And I did have to learn that in such a way that I could say it without even stopping and pausing. That was tricky, but the hardest stuff was was this. It was um, he has another little um, kind of monologue about the theatre that we go to mm -hmm. with, with, um, with Beth's parents, and he has all this background knowledge, and that included dates and names. Yeah. yeah that was How many tricky. takes to that? No, not too many. Well, I mean, I it was quite. Uh, that one was probably the most stop-start. I would get halfway through and just blow it and 
you know, you want to be able to do it in one, I'm not sure which takes Max used, but for your own sense of having done it right, you want to be able to just do it in one go, and I think it took a few together. Yeah. It wasn't terrible. Was it? No, we didn't have much time either. It was like yeah. five minutes, it, you know, we did it in 25 days the entire time. Okay. Was, you know, fast and furious. 24 so. of those days without scene. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the movie was great, and it was very, I feel like it was very heartfelt and honest, and you know, there's lots of comedic elements and drama and romance about a, a serious topic, mm. almost like it's like genre list. I mean, cause some, some people classify it as like a romantic comedy, but I think it's way more than that. Um, what do you guys feel as far as like a genre, and like what would you classify it? It's conventions of a romantic comedy, of course, um, but it's more of a character piece, I suppose, but uh, I guess I, you want to sell it as something more accessible than that too. It's by no means, I don't know, mm. it, I don't know I daunting right. or something, because it's not, it's actually a really lo lovey, lo lovey, loving, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> it's all of those. It's all those things. It's all of those things. <laughs> so much love. Charming piece, but not, so, anyway, so it's a difficult one to, 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 to just absolutely. pitch in one. Yeah, yeah absolutely. People, I think people are so used now as well to romantic comedies, you know, but writ large, the big juggernaut romantic comedies, and so we're taking this and saying, well, if you like his a romantic comedy, if you want to think of it as that, and take it and see, you know, and, and just try digesting it like this for a change. You know? yeah. mm -hmm. And see the romance and the comedy, but in a story which is a little different, and which I hope has a believability to it as well. Had a lot of things to say. I have something to show you. Come in, come in. Oh my. Oh my. Are you excited? What? Sexually, because I was. Thank you. I should be going Because now. I said that no. thing about being sexually excited? No, no, no. Well, yeah. I have this thing that's called Asperger's syndrome. Oh. Albert Einstein, Thomas Jefferson, Mozart. They had Asperger's? Probably. Baby, remember on the bus and my hand. You've got to meet the baby. Yeah. Would you like to see the video? No, thank you. About Adam, he's not for you. It's impossible. It's not rocket science. Do you know what you want? He's really sweet and interesting. When you love somebody, it's hard to think about anything but to breathe. He lives in another world. You don't need to make that kind of compromise. No, you don't make my decisions. Hard to figure out. I can see that you're upset, but I don't know what to do. Could you give me a hug? Yes. Adam, I'd like you to give me a hug. When you love somebody, it's hard to think about anything but to breathe. Some chocolate. I'm not Forrest Gump, you know. <laughs> okay.